our media to the timeline. We've trimmed it up just a little bit. We've looked at the different types of trimming that are available. We've also looked at some basic transitions and how to set those up. Now we're gonna look at some basic filters or some things we can do to enhance or give some artistic creativity to the media that we're working with. So let's dig into some basic filters. Now before we begin, I want to move these last three clips all the way down so that they're attached to this last piece here. So we're going to select this uh, next up clip or event. I'm going to hold the shift key and select the last one. You'll notice that that selects all of them. So when I move one, I'm moving them all. We can see those snapping into position there. So now we've got all these in place. Let's start looking at some basic filters. One of the most common filters we're going to use is going to be our levels filter. So let's click on the video effects tab and scroll down until we find our levels tool. Now we can use this at a number of different ways. We're going to put this on the clip to start with or on the event as it's called. So let's just drag our levels down here and drop it. Now it's kind of in the way. We can't really see our preview screen there so we don't know exactly what we're doing. So let's move this down. Now it may be if you accidentally get it over into a docking area, it's going to snap into that docking area. One way to prevent it from snapping is holding the control key as you move it around. That allows you to set it somewhere or place it somewhere without it docking. All right, now let's find a place where our clip is a little bit darker or where we can see at least a full face view. There we go, we can see both people there. Straight on in the face. And let's start working with it. Now we can see with our input start, this darkens it up. And our input end, this brightens it up. And what we're looking for is kind of a happy medium. We also have a gamma control here that allows us to shift the gamma of the shot. Now I've just moved that and I don't know where it really belongs. So just by double clicking the button, it allows me to put it to its default position. Let's go to our input start. And let's just darken it down just a little bit. That might seem like the opposite direction we want to go, but what we're doing is a to, trying to find a little more definition in the face there. Now let's come to our input end. Let's brighten that up just a little bit, not very much. There's our shot. And uh, let's check our levels here. So there's what we had, and here's what we have. So we have a little bit more contrast or a little bit more definition. And we can work with our outputs and output ends as well. We could spend a lot of time explaining exactly how the levels filter works, but essentially it's a tool that allows us to correct for exposure. So now we can see the eagle and the young man's chest a little better. We can see definition around their faces a little bit more. Let's look at that shot before, after, before and after. So we might have that just a little bit too bright. Take that back and again before, after, before, after. See how the whites are a much more solid white as opposed to a gray? So we get a little bit more out of it that way. So that's one way of using a basic filter. Now what if we wanted to add more to it? Well, let's close down the levels filter and let's find another filter we might want to add. For instance, um, maybe we want to add a border. So we'll click on the border tool and we'll drag this down here. And let's choose the type of border from the drop down menu that we'd like to use. Maybe we want a soft edge border. We can see we've dropped on a nice black border. We could choose some different types of borders. For instance, there's a solid white border, or maybe we would like that to be purple or green or blue. Just by dragging our color through here, we can see whatever color we'd like that to be. Now you'll notice as I slide into the yellows, we start seeing this little warning sign. What this means is that this color cannot be broadcast. It can be used on a DVD and it can be used on the web, but it cannot be used if this is going out to your local television station for broadcast. All right, so there we've got a, a nice border going on there. We can make this as large or as small as we want. We can even use this as a transitional effect if we want to. So there's quite a bit that we can do with this. Now we're going to leave the border off. So how do we remove an effect or a filter once we've put it in place? We come over to the far right hand upper corner and choose remove selected plugin right there in the plugin. So when we click this, the border tool now goes away and we're left only with levels. And in fact, I think we're going to pull the levels tool completely off of this event as well. But before we do, I'd like to point something out. If we come down here to the event and we look, 
you can see that this switch for event effects is green. Let's go over to the next filter. That's gray. This tells us that this particular event has a filter on it. So let's close this filter down. We'll click on the filter button here or the event effects button. That opens the filter right back up for us. So let's remove that filter. Notice that this button has gone back to a gray color. So that's all there is to inserting a filter. It's important to know that there are effectively three different and arguably four different places that we can apply filters. We can apply filters at the event. That basically means at the clip level. That will apply the filter only to that particular clip or that particular event. So if there's two events next to each other, only the event that's had the filter applied to it will show up. We can also apply them at the track level. That means all of the video that is on that particular track will be affected by a given filter, and we'll look at that in just a second. We can also apply a filter to the entire project, in other words, to every piece of video that's on that project. And those are the three primary areas that we can apply different filters or effects, if you will, to the project. Now there's one last place. We can also apply them inside of our project media bin. Remember when we started importing the media, we had the project media bin in there? Well, it might be that we're going to be cutting up a clip into several different pieces, and rather than go back later and apply an effect to all of that particular piece of media, it might be that we'll just apply it in the project media, and then every time we use a cut or a segment of that particular piece of media, it will already have the filter applied. This will be beneficial for color correction and some other things. So let's look at some other ways we can apply filters. We've looked at how to apply something at the clip level, and this is an individual clip right here. Now we might want to apply this to everything in the timeline. For instance, as we look at some of this other video, it's just slightly washed out. And some of this is really just due to the exposure on the camera and the way that it's set. So it might be that we want to correct for everything. So let's go grab that same levels tool again. We'll scroll down to it, choose levels. We're going to drag the preset reset to none. This time we're going to drop it right on the video track instead. So now we see the same tool, it opened in the same place, but now we're applying it at the track level. 